Hello again, this is UML Operator. Okay, today we're gonna to be talking about deploying Spark's ProCloud Server. So what is ProCloud Server? If you go to Spark's products, you can get an overview of ProCloud. It, it, it basically creates the ability to integrate. Of course, with Spark's products, it utilizes an industry standard, open services for lifecycle collaboration, RESTful API integration, OSLC. And it gives you the ability to have anyone who's authorized access your models from any device and a lot more. But let's look, let's go all the way down to the bottom and just look at the architecture for a moment. So ProCloud Server is deployed as an integration layer between your Spark CA web tooling, other devices that are connecting to your web models via web EA, and then there's uh, Prolaborate, which uh, I will talk about in a later session. It allows you to manage your floating licenses, if that's the model that you went with, and do a lot more, and connect to, I want to say any, but it's many, uh, database technologies. So this middle layer here in cloud, multi-tenant, allows you to connect your Sparks uh, tooling and other tooling to your data, your model data, and other external data. And we'll talk about that more in a later session. So let's get into it. As usual in many of these sessions, I have you bring up the Sparks Welcome, the help tutorials, and we're gonna go to Start, and we're gonna go to Help. We're gonna click the down arrow and Open Help. As soon as we open Help, we get to the Welcome screen. From here, we're going to go to the model repository, and then we're gonna to go to ProCloud server repositories, and we're gonna to touch on, not in detail, touch on this material in order to set up ProCloud server. Now I'm gonna to try to keep this as simple as possible. I'm gonna deploy ProCloud server on my local desktop, as well as I've already deployed my SQL server on local, to make this demonstration easier. In later sessions, when I deploy to cloud, I will show you again how to step through ProCloud Server in an external deployment. Feel free to pause and read ahead. If you go into Cloud Repositories Overview, you can go down and you can watch a webinar they did on setting up ProCloud Server. There was another webinar that demonstrates this in a MySQL environment. These are good videos to watch to help you get started. Go back, we're gonna go into ProCloud Server Setup. And of course, the first thing is, is to download and install the setup, the executable file for ProCloud Server. We can go ahead and click on ProCloud Server Installation, and you know it'll help you step through that and get everything ready to go. And we're gonna to touch on that in this video. Using your login credentials, you'll log in, go to the install where you got it. You'll go to ProCloud Server. Let's expand this. And you'll go to the downloads for ProCloud Server. And you can choose between 64-bit and 32-bit for your installation. All right, I've got the install file right here for 64-bit. You could have downloaded 32-bit. I recommend you go 64-bit if your operating system supports it. I'm in Windows 10, by the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch this. Here we go, I'm gonna go next. Read through the license agreement, every word, just kidding. Accept, hit next. There's more readme information, very important. It supports Windows 11, Windows 10, which I'm on, servers, which I have a couple of those, and Linux with Wine or Crossover. All right, so what I'm gonna do is hit next. So we go through that. I want the IIS in integration. This is optional and I'm just gonna uh, put the entire, just the, I'm sorry, let me click that again. Will be installed to the local hard drive, all right? And you know, th this is optional. If you're not using IIS, you're using Apache or something like that. ProCloud, the installation provides you integration with other web servers, okay? And if you're watching the webinar that uh, Scott, Scott Hubbard with uh, Sparks goes through, he steps through uh, IXAMP as a integration method, 
Um, and I think there's some other webinars out there that Sparks provides you, right? But I'm going to focus on IIS integration. And I'm going to go to my C drive. That's where it's going to be 64-bit program files, Spark systems, ProCloud server. And then I'm just going to hit next, accept that. If you want to change that, go ahead and do so, right? So I'm going to hit next. And then I'm going to hit install. And yes, I feel good. And it's going to install Spark's ProCloud server. Installation is complete. I'm going to select finish. And you'll notice you've got two new shortcuts that are on your desktop. So I've got the client and I have the floating license config client. I'm not using floating license, so I don't need this. Let's go ahead and launch the ProCloud configure client, double click it launch a shortcut, and you get to a default login screen. And you can always select help, and it will take you to login help, where you can get more information and support from Sparks. Now, in the presentations that others have done uh, over the last couple of years, they if you leave password blank, you can just simply hit OK here, and it will launch the localhost version of Sparks Pro Cloud, and you can get to the client. However, that doesn't work for, that hasn't worked for me and I've done this a, quite a few times. So what I typically do is I go to where I installed Sparks. And for me, as I showed you when we deployed, I went to my C drive, 64-bit program files. So Spark systems, ProCloud server, and I go to the service package. I'm gonna launch that and open it. Here is the Sparks ProCloud server config file. And you can launch this in Notepad. You can launch this in your IDE. Let's just go ahead and open this in Notepad. And you'll notice when you bring that up in Notepad that if you go down to Server Password, it has some mixed alphanumeric characters already there. And what I do is I just simply put in a password that I want to use for login, all right? So put in a password here, go ahead and save the config file, and let's launch Sparks client. I meant to say ProCloud server client, not Sparks client. So let's put in our password. Hopefully I remembered it. Let's check. And there we are. We're in the client. Nothing has been configured yet, and let's do that next. Right, we're in the database manager. There's ports, lets you know that 1804 is HTTP and 1805 is your HTTPS, and you can configure and manage your ports here. Uh, integration, I don't have any integrations right now. Cover that in a later advanced session. So, what we're going to do is we're going to hit add, and the, the add database manager for native comes up here, and we're using Microsoft SQL Server. So, I deploy on MS, I'm sorry, MySQL. I use PostgreSQL quite a lot. I'm just starting to play with SQLite. And then there's some other data technologies, including Oracle in here, all right? So we're going to use uh, OLE, and uh, we're gonna put in the server, and it's localhost, localhost, backslash SQL Express, all right? 14, 1433, and if your DBA gives you something different, otherwise that's usually a default. And we're going to put the database name in here, which is UML operator underscore demo is the name of the database. And we're going to put in the user credentials in here, password, and make sure this is very important. I'm just going to copy this. Make sure your alias is the same as your database name. Uh, and um, let me populate this database user and password and I'll be right back. Once you put in your credentials, you have to hit test. Otherwise, this button right here is going to be disabled and you can't continue. You've got to test. And my first test failed because I went local and I meant localhost. So we're going to run test. It's now successful. We're going to hit OK. And there we go, we've configured a database connection through ProCloud Server. Notice this red icon right here. That means that you're not, no one can access through ProCloud Server. So what we need to do is we're gonna select it, we're gonna choose edit, and we're going to enable, 
right? So I'm going to hit OK. I'm not going to change anything here. So I'm going to hit OK. And now we've got connectivity. You'll notice when you go into access control, you can whitelist clients, IPs, etc. It tells you, hey, warning, if you don't do that, all clients are allowed, all right? So for this demonstration, I'm not going to manage access control. All right, we're in Sparks now. I have a SQL connection, SQL Server connection to the demonstration database that we're going to that we just configured in ProCloud Server. I usually test my SQL connectivity first. My DBA can do that, and I'm uh, here. I'm launching direct directly to Microsoft SQL. Right. What we want to do is close this project. And we are going to go through a cloud connection, right? So here, you give it any name you want. I usually like to give it a meaningful name and then to make sure that I understand that this connection is to cloud versus directly to SQL, I pair authentically put in cloud, right? I'm on my local host because that's where we deployed it. If you had a, a server that it was deployed on, you'd put the server name in here, the URL uh, in here, HTTP or HTTPS, and then whatever port number was provided, we're going to use 1804, as you saw in the configuration file for HTTP, right? This is the alias name, i.e. the database name, right? So that why, that's why it's important to have the alias represent the database name. Now, if you've got a really complicated naming convention for your databases, just you can make a simple alias name that your modelers can use to connect. All right, so here we go. We're ready to go. If you need help, just select help. We're going to hit OK. Up oh, there we go. We are in the same database since it's SQL. We're going through Sparks ProCon server. And now we have access to a lot more powerful integration via Sparks Enterprise Architect, such as if I go to the Publish tab, Reusable Asset Service, and this will be our next video where we will connect via ProCloud Server to a SQL database, and we're going to use UML Demo, where we keep our reusable assets. So I'll see you in that next session. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.